Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. With a brand new area in the game comes new content. And with new content come a bunch of moneymakers for the low, mid, and high-level brothers and sisters that want to take advantage of new items to earn some massive GB. Just a few weeks ago, I made a money-making video where I said that it would probably be my last one until new content arrives. And, lo and behold, that is exactly what we got. In today's video, we are going to explore 16 moneymakers in Valamor, as well as going over requirements, and I will give you my opinion on each and every one of them. Boys and girls, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a subscription and a like for the YouTube overlords, and if you can come check out our almost daily live streams on this channel. You can also join our Discord with the link in the description if you have any further questions. Before we start, the very first thing I should mention is that you will see the moneymakers from not as good to the absolute bangers. And, as I always do, I have two extremely important disclaimers for this video. Number one, everything you're about to see was recorded shortly after the update, so numbers may not be exact, but you could still profit from all of these in the future. And second, remember that all the numbers you see here are almost at maximum, since I tested them on my maxed account at nearly full efficiency. But I will add realistic numbers too, in case you have a lower level, and AFK a little bit. Also, the video is going to be unscripted, so let me know what you think. Boys and girls, let's begin. Okay, we're gonna start at the Hunter Guild with Novice Contracts, and if you remember from my previous videos, or if you are looking at the screen, you only need level 46 Hunter to partake in these, as well as the required uh, quest. Now, this is where the numbers are going to be a little skewed just for this one, because if you don't know how rumor contracts work, basically if you grab a novice contract from one of the masters, you are going to be able to hunt any creature at the level that you are at. So, for example, I as a max player, I can get a novice contract, but I can get a moonlight antelope uh, creature which requires level 91. Because of this, I'm going to have a slightly lower GP per hour and, of course, XP, because... At level 46, you are not going to be making 75k experience per hour or getting it. Uh, but the loot that you get from this really is not that good. After I opened all of my uh, novice loot pouches, I was greeted with just about 32k. And actually what I got from the creatures themselves was a little bit higher at the 40k for the fur and 20k for the meat. So in total, 92k GP, we're not starting great, but trust me, these are only going to get a these are only going to get better. And uh, yeah, if you are low level hunter, this is a perfect way to start your training journey. And speaking of low level, as well as AFK, we are going to start by thieving houses. Now, the one thing you need for these are the keys that you steal from the wealthy citizens in the bazaar, and this is especially useful if you are pickpocketing some from them if a kid is distracting them. We are going to be mentioning these a little bit later because it is better GP per hour, but once you get your, hand on, your hands on one of these keys, or multiple of them, and if you have a bunch of them stacked together, you can go into the houses, and this is great AFK uh, XP per hour, which I'm, I, you know, again, I'm going to mention in a future video. However, when you grab the valuables and when you're done looting all of the houses, when you're done with your keys, and you sell them to the shady figure near the bazaar, I got 60 to 70 KGP per hour on average, and that is basically because I have the higher, uh, like, valuable loot that I unlocked by getting higher glory in the Colosseum. This is especially useful in this one, but to be quite honest with you, you don't really want to make money with this if you are going to pickpocket from wealthy citizens, which, again, we're going to see in a second. If you get a lot of keys, this is basically for you to get AFK experience per hour because it is so, so chill. And honestly, we had a great time doing this on stream, but when it comes to money per hour, 60 to 70 KGB, might be good for a low level, but honestly, uh, for even a mid-level player, it's not really going to be worth your time. Okay, bear with me because a lot of these have to do with Hunter, and up next we have Expert Rumors. Now, at the beginning of the video when I said that a couple of these numbers are going to be slightly skewed, this is probably the worst case of all of them, and it's because I was stuck in a Saber Tooth Kebit contract for about 30 minutes. I don't really want to show you the audio for this recording and as you can see I am you know you're seeing this on screen because a lot of tears were shed and I was coping like there was no tomorrow because of that I was not really able to do a lot of them but when I opened them it actually gave me decent loot for the you know a terrible amount that I was able to do in that one hour landing me 170k loot from the contract reward itself and 40k for the fur as well as 20k for the meat Remember to always, always, always take your meat pouch and your fur pouch 
it literally takes just one click to get your extra stuff. And even if you sell it for a lot lower in the Grand Exchange, it is going to be 100% profit. Because for some of these, all you need are logs, and you could even chop them in the area that you're, you know, training Hunter. So even if it's 10, 20, 30 KGB, if you are 60, 70 Hunter, that could potentially add up, you know, in order for you to get your next upgrade or something. So definitely, this one doesn't really seem like it's too high, but even if I was not able to, ma to make many of these contracts, the GP per hour was not really that bad. So do these at your own risk, and Jagex, please update the, de the deadfall traps. Please make them instants and let us catch multiple Kebet at once. For those of you who have slightly higher level in thieving, I recommend the pickpocketing from wealthy citizens, both when distracted by the kids as well as just hanging out on their own. This is going to be 100% profit as well, and I was wearing my rogues outfit, which doubles all of the loot that you get, including all of the keys. So this is going to be absolutely massive if you want some AFK thieving experience, as I said before. The more keys you have, the more AFK time you're able to get, and it is absolutely massive. But when it comes to distracting the kids, I believe someone said on stream that the little urchins are going to be doing that every minute or so, and once they, the wealthy citizens are distracted, you're going to be able to to automatically pickpocket them for anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds and honestly it's super chill i got to 240 kgp in that one hour which like i said for you know an end game player is not a lot but every little bit of gp helps and also i highly recommend the medium or hard rd uh, diary for you to be able to pickpocket at a slightly higher chance and if you don't have a hundred percent success rate then you can use other things like i said in my thieving guide like the dodgy necklace uh shadow veil and you have a lot of options to make this a lot better and they'll land you a little bit of gp per hour for your pocket we're finally jumping into something that involves combat and we are going to camp sulfur nagwas at the nepotsli dungeon hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly or I didn't even say it correctly in my uh, Perilous Moon's Guide video. But the important part about this, which I will mention in, my, in one of my future videos, which is all about all of the training methods, is that this is 100% free. You don't need combat potions, you don't need prayer potions, you don't need food. You don't even need food because you're basically praying against all the damage. Because if you prepare your potions inside the dungeon, it is going to be 100% free. And all you need to do is go to the little prison area with the Sulfur Nagwas and turn Auto Retaliate on, grab whatever weapon you want, and then grab as much of their loot as possible. I was lucky enough to get one of the uniques, which are called the Surful, uh, Sulfur Blades, I believe. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, brain fart. Uh, but even without that, I was netting about 260 KGP per hour. And to be quite honest, it is a great place to, you know, it's basically a budget nightmare zone, but you could potentially get a little bit of money from it. This is 100% free training. I cannot stress this enough. This is absolutely massive. So if you're looking for just a little bit of profit and some AFK combat training, this is a great place to start. Going back to Hunter for this one, we will focus on Adept Rumors. Going to the Hunter Guild, this one was a lot better than the Expert ones that I was coping about for about two minutes in the last one. Uh, but after doing all of these, I got about 430 KGB, 350 of it being from the loot that you get from the sacks themselves, as well as 64k from the fur and 18k from the meat. Like I said before, you want those pouches at all times because it is going to be 100% profit. The important part about this that I haven't mentioned is that from opening all of these, you have different amounts of percentage chance of getting the Hunter outfit as well as that Quetzal pet that I really, really want and hopefully I will get my hands on one day. Now, I would say that compared to the expert one, this is a lot better, uh, but it's basically, like I said before, the numbers are a little bit skewed. I was getting 100k experience per hour, when in the expert one, I was getting 57k, even if I was hunting for higher level creatures, but it's because that 30 minute task absolutely blocked my mental. But Adept Contracts is a really good way to start when you're done with the novice ones, and you're gonna get some pretty decent loot for the creatures that you're going to be hunting, so grab all of those tools and get ready for a lot of catching. The last moneymaker related to rumors is going to be the Master Contracts, because, spoiler alert, we have a couple other moneymakers that have to do with Hunter, but for now, I was getting a whopping 145k experience per hour, and most importantly, all of the loot sacks that I got at the end of the contract came out to be a around 480k GP. Remember, this is all maximum. I was hunting with the best of teleports. I, you know, was basically click intensive for the entire hour. So, you know, I would say a minimum of about the 300k if you're just about level 91 hunter, because you might potentially fail a couple of these. 
400k from the loot and 72k from all of the things that I got from the antelopes. I believe I got both the sunlight and the moonlight antelopes, which I grabbed everything, put it in my bank and uh, grabbed it to the price check. Now, like I said before, the antlers and everything, if you want to... I would say chisel the antlers is going to be some extra GP, but eventually that is not really going to be too useful because it's not a lot of GP per hour and you might potentially waste a few ticks that you're not going to be using uh, catching some of the uh, creatures that you will be uh, assigned to. So Master Contracts was a lot better than some of the previous ones, but not better than what's coming next. So, you can catch Moonlight Moths in the basement of the Hunter Guild, and if you go to the store northeast of the guild, you're going to be able to buy Butterfly Jars for 1 GP each. Meaning that if you have the level required to catch Moonlight Moths, for some odd reason I was able to sell these for a grand total of 480k GP per hour. This is not as much XP per hour, just uh, coming at about 56k in the same amount of time. But this, like I said before, is going to be 100% profit. If you're really, really desperate for money, and if you want to get like a couple of upgrades or maybe some tools that you need here and there, this is going to be incredible money because you don't really need to put a lot of it. You need, you don't need to buy anything from the Grand Exchange. You can get, you can just get your butterfly net, your butterfly jars, and to get catching. The good thing about this one is that uh, it is kind of, you know, it's pretty secluded and they spawn really quickly. So you're not going to be really fighting with anyone else. And if you do, just hop and you're going to be able to find an empty world for massive profit per hour. Moonlight mods, really fun to catch, but I highly recommend that NPC uh, indicator for you to tag them and so you can see them better. For the next one, we are finally going back to combat and we're going to take care of some Moons of Apparel. It was both a blessing and a curse that I did this for one hour on stream and I got no uniques. I didn't get any of them, which made me pretty sad, but it gave me a much better idea of how much money you could potentially get with the highest XP, no, not XP, with the highest efficiency per hour. Uh, a lot of people might blame me for this because I used the Torva, Scythe, Dragon Claws, uh, Account Sword, but like I said before, this is kind of like aiming to give you the maximum amount of GP that you can get, coming to about 200 to 300k if you're not really getting that many runs per hour, but... Of course, remember that just like the Barrow's Brothers, if you get any unique, you're going to increase that GP per hour by a whole ton. By just getting about 20 KC, the, my only unique right now is the Blood Rager top, which I was able to sell for 2.3 million GP, um, which is obviously going to increase that profit by a whole ton. And like I said before, the great part about this is that you don't need to input anything, you don't need food, prayer potions, super combat, maybe one or two stamina potions, but this is going to be mostly 100% profit, it's going to be a lot of fun, and of course, great um, XP per hour for your combats as well, which I was not really taking into account because I was was just uh, watching the money. Definitely do this if you are looking to improve a little bit at movement, PvPing, and of course, having a lot of fun. For some reason, even though the Sunlight mods require a lower Hunter level to catch, I was able to get more XP and the GP per hour by doing this. Maybe it's because it's a little closer to the Hunter Guild, you're able to get your Butterfly Jars a lot quicker, banking slightly faster, but um, there are a lot more of these, which means that you're going to be able to catch them a lot, a lot faster. Now, these ones, again, highly recommend you grab that NPC marker or NPC uh, highlight, tag all those mods, because if the Moonlight mods are difficult to see in the basement of the Hunter Guild, if I didn't, like, right-click and I wasn't, like, seeing the flickering, like, you know, pixels on my screen, these are so difficult to see, and this is a problem with most of the butterfly creatures, they like twitch around too much and you know for someone like me who has really poor vision you're not really going to be able to see them too well so make sure to tag all of them and click on the boxes whenever they're available and again this is going to be a hundred percent profit for you to you know take advantage as uh, you know as much as possible okay for this next one technically we have a two in one because i decided to test both the sunlight and the moonlight antelope meat by buying raw food from the grand exchange and then cooking them and then selling them to see how much profit i was able to make if you don't have 99 cooking uh, and if you don't have your cooking cape so you don't burn any food remember to grab your cooking gauntlets and go to either the Hosidius kitchen or if you want to go to the mid guild in order to make as many of them as possible and of course a burn as a few of them as possible now by cooking and selling sunlight antelope meat I was able to get 350 kgp per hour and uh, the experience is actually really nice but where this method shines is the raw moonlight antelope people are going to be uh, you know 
know, kind of looking for that to 26 healing, even if it's, you know, divided and, you know, first you get a couple of HP and then the rest. Uh, this is basically the new best in slot food. <laughs> you know, calling it best in slot, but it's not really a slot. You are, this is basically going to be high in demand because, you know, the sweaties are going to uh, want the highest uh, survivability chance by getting the best food possible. And the Moonlight Antelope Meat was uh, netting me 800 kgp per hour. And each of these uh, give you 220 experience, meaning that they're in par with the... Uh, what do you call it? The Anglers, which is about 300 or, you know, slightly above 300k experience per hour. So, if you're a cooking master, definitely get these, because it is great GP per hour for not many clicks in that time. Getting into the top three, we have a suggestion by someone in my Discord by the name Ultoman, and he told me that if you make meat pouches, basically make the small meat pouch, the big meat pouch, and then you elk them, you are going to get some decent profits. Lo and behold, this is actually true. Not that I didn't believe him, but I still needed to test it to see how much money I was able to make. The good thing about this, number one, if you're an Ironman, this is going to be pretty decent. It's going to take slightly fa slightly longer in order for you to get all of the supplies needed to make all of these pouches. But if you are a main account, if you have access to the Grand Exchange, go buy Fox Fur and Sunlight Fur, Sunlight Antelope Fur, because if you make all of these, first of all, you're going to get a little bit of crafting experience. And when you high alk each and every one of these, you're going to get 4,500 GP. This gave me a profit, profit after buying all the materials, of 900k GP per hour. I didn't really think something like this was going to give you some money, and I didn't even think this was even a thing. I don't really know if Jagex is going to patch this and make these not alkable, so if you're watching this video, take advantage of this as soon as possible. Thank you again, Ultiman from the Discord. We are going to go back to Hunter, and this one is not really going to be that popular because you need a whopping level 91 Hunter for the new highest level Hunter creature in the entire game, Moonlight Antelope. I was hunting these for a little while, and while I got pretty decent XP per hour, I only got 200k GP in that time. Now, it is important to mention that right now all of the antlers are a little bit lower, like if you price check them themselves, they're going to be kind of valuable, but when you process them, if you use a chisel on the antlers, and if you sell them to, to the Grand Exchange, they are going to be a lot lower, because I, I'm guessing not a lot of people are going to be using the new crossbows, and that is completely fine, because, you know, people are just still adapting to the meta, seeing if they're useful, and if they get buffed in the future, then, then maybe you're going to get a lot more money. But for now, I only got 800k GP for the bolts, 30k for the fur, and 60k for the meat. The meat is the most valuable thing here because it is the newest, the best in slot. I mean, it's not really a slot, but it is the new highest healing food in the entire game. And I would say that if you have level 91 Hunter, each of these give you 450 experience per catch, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And it doesn't sound like a lot of experience, but trust me, this is extremely chill. Deadfall traps are here to stay, and honestly, I love them. So Moonlight Antelopes come in in the next spot. And right after that, we have the Sunlight Antelope, which is a little better GP per hour, and that is because of the Sunfire Splinters. Now, I got 150k of these in the entire hour. The bolts are a lot, a lot cheaper than the Moonlight Bolts because, well, they're a lot weaker. And just like I said before, uh, normally on the first price check, I got about 300k experience, not experience, sorry, GP from the bolts themselves. But when I sold them to the Grand Exchange, they sell for about 70 GP each or 75 GP each, which is not really that good. You're also going to get a little bit of money from the fur and the meat if you have your uh, meat and the fur pouches. And honestly, it's really good if you just want to focus on these. It is decent experience per hour, as you can see on screen. But what you want from these catches are going to be the Sunfire Splinters because they are the hottest item right now because everyone wants to charge their quiver to the maximum and they are going to stay expensive for a little while. If you're watching this months in advance, they these this could potentially be a little less because the more people that get their quivers and fully charge them, then obviously the less people are going to be interested in buying them. But for now, these are really, really good GP for the level required. If you have decent levels, stats, gear, you can spam waves 1, 2, and 3 in the Coliseum for some decent GP per hour and of course practicing all of the spawns in case you want to go for that quiver which, spoiler alert, is going to be our next video. Now, I was doing this for, you know, for like 30 minutes, I believe I did it, and, you know, in total, it came out to be 2.5 million GP per hour. 
This one has slightly, I would say, higher strategy for this, because if you do wave 1, you're always going to get splinters. If you do wave 2, you might get a couple of rune items, and by doing wave 3, you could potentially get rune plate bodies, which is some of the most profitable things that you can see at the lower waves. Including all the items, um, down to 2.5 mil GP per hour, the only thing I was wasting or using money on were runes, but it's not really like they cost like, you know, 1 mil GP per hour, it's not really going to cut into your, your, your profit too much and honestly it is a great way to you know practice the mechanics the spawns and obviously it is going to be a lot more click intensive a lot of fun but definitely um a little more i would say frustrating because you're putting it like a lot more effort into it and not really making as much as the next one and now as of the time of making this video the number one money maker in the entire area of alamor is spamming wave one coliseum because of those sunfire splinters I didn't want to get flamed, so I didn't grab my, my Ancestral, my Shadow, my Torva, and everything. So, as you can see, right here I'm just spamming Wave 1 with a Void, a Whip, a DDS, and that's it. Grab a couple of Ancients, and as long as you have, like, maybe some boosting potions if you want to make this a little faster, you're going to clear Wave 1 anywhere between 20, 30, or even 40 seconds if you have slightly lower stats. And even if it's one full minute, you're still going to get a lot, a lot of GP from this, which is extremely, extremely easy. Go in, freeze the trio of Fremenix, and then focus on the Major, and then remember to attack the Ranger with melee, and the Mage with ranged. Hopefully by then, uh, when you freeze or use Blood Barrage on the, on the melee, it's already done, but if you take a little longer, you're gonna have to deal with a Furry. So in just about a minute, you're gonna get a lot of money, and remember, important, extremely important to say this, Jagex could potentially tweak this in the future because this moneymaker, 6 mil GP per hour, for the amount of effort, levels, and the gear it takes, this is absolutely ridiculous. If you ask me, should this be nerfed? Maybe, and probably give some later waves a little higher value. Uh, but for now, if you're watching this video, go abuse this method as much as you can, because this is the number one moneymaker in Valamor that, again, could potentially be patched in the future, we never know. Boys and girls, that's pretty much it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed, and I hope you take advantage of these as fast as possible, because, who knows, in maybe a few weeks or months time, when these numbers are not accurate anymore, I am going to get absolutely cooked in the comments. But you could counter that by doing the following. If you want to be entered in our weekly bond giveaway, tell me what your favorite moneymaker in Valamor is, and what is the most reliable for you so far, if you have tested any of them, or any that you saw in the video. If you include the term RSN in your comments, as well as your RuneScape username, you will be entered in our weekly bond giveaway, for which I will do a draw on Friday. I want to thank all, all the people that you see on screen right now for tossing a few dollars my way, to this wonderful project that I love so much. If you want to become part of this list of legends, click the join button below and see all of the cool perks you can get in the videos, in the live streams, and of course, in the Discord. So, boys and girls, in the next one, I am going to show you how to get your very first and possibly only quiver in old school RuneScape as I go wave by wave, showing you my personal tips for all the encounters as well as the final boss. And I have a really good one for you, because uh, something happened there that you might potentially want to check it out. Thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.